Question 1. Given an array of numbers in sorted order, count the pairs of numbers whose sum is less than x. You can always pause the video and think for the solution. Let's take this array of sorted numbers as an example, and we have to find the number of pairs in this array whose sum is smaller than 14. So, to do that, mark the first and the last nodes of the array. Now, check if the sum of the values in the first and last nodes is smaller than x. And if it is, then that means all these pairs, will also have their sum smaller than x as well. Therefore, Increase the count with the corresponding number of pairs and move the first marker to the next node. Repeat the process. Here, the sum is no longer smaller than x, so we will move the second marker towards left to get a smaller value for the pair. Again, the sum is still not smaller than x. So we do the same. Now, since there's no more nodes left in between, our process ends, and the final count will be stored in the count variable. Question 2. Given a range of numbers, count the numbers which have same first and last digits. For example, between 7 and 20, such numbers are, 8, 9, and 11. Let's look at the first 100 numbers. What we can observe from here is, there are 9 such numbers from 1 to 10, and after that, there are 9 more in a diagonal as multiples of 11. So, in the first 100 numbers, there are 18 such numbers present. Now, let's look at the numbers between 101 to 200. The only numbers with similar first and last digits are the ones in the first row. And there are 10 such numbers. Similarly for the next 100 numbers, the second row will have same first and last digits. A similar trend will be followed until 1000. Now, let's look at the numbers between 1001 to 2000. This time there are 100 such numbers. All of these belong to the first row. Similarly, for 2001 to 3000, the second row will have similar first and last digits. And this trend will be followed until 10,000. Following the same pattern, we can deduce that, from 10,001 to 20,000, there will be 1,000 such numbers in the first row, and so on for all the five digit numbers. So, if we are given a range, using these observations, we can simply find the count of such numbers from 1 to lower limit of the given range, and, subtract it from the count for 1 to upper limit of that range. As a quick exercise, find how many numbers with same first and last digits, exist between 3 and 441. Question 3. Suppose there are millions of numbers, and you have to print the maximum 20 of all. How will you do that? We will use a min heap to store the largest 20 numbers. Take the first 20 numbers and construct them in heap. Now, since this is a min heap, the root will always contain the minimum of all numbers in it. So, we will use this property to our advantage. After creating the heap, take one number at a time. Check whether it is bigger than the root of the heap. If yes, then remove the root and insert this new number into the heap. Keep repeating the process for each number, and insert the bigger numbers into the heap. After going through all the numbers, 
the heap will contain the maximum 20 numbers in it. We used a heap, and not sorting, because, it will have a lesser time complexity than sorting. Question 4. Suppose there are in bags containing different amount of chocolates, and there is a wizard and a kid. At every second the kid eats all the chocolates from the bag containing maximum number of chocolates, and the wizard refills that bag with half of the chocolates it was containing earlier. Find how many chocolates has the kid eaten at t seconds. One way to approach the problem is to make a sorted array of descending order, for all the amounts of chocolates present in the in bags. And then, every time the kid eats the chocolates, just reduce the value of the first node of the array by half of its value. So here, each node contains the count of chocolates, in the corresponding bag. Once the array is created, sort the array in descending order. Reduce the value of the first node by half and sort again. For t seconds, do the process t times. Another way to approach this problem is using a max heap. Construct the max heap with the counts of chocolates in each bag. The root node will always contain the maximum number, because this is a max heap. Now, every time the kid eats the chocolates, just remove the root node and insert a new node with half of its previous value. Do this process t times for t seconds. And keep track of the chocolates eaten by the kid, by adding the value of the root node to a temporary variable every time the root is removed. Question 5. Reverse a string. For example, my name is Colin, to Con is name my. Let's take the same string for example. Start iterating over each character and keep adding it to a temporary string. When a space is encountered, put a copy of the temporary string created in a stack, and remove all the characters from the temporary string. Do this for all the words in the sentence, and push them in the stack sequentially. Now, pop each string one by one from the stack, and construct the reverse sentence. The given string has been reversed. Question 6. Add two singly linked lists. Let's take these two linked lists, each of these lists represent a number. We have to create a new linked list, which represents the sum of these two numbers. To do that, start with the head pointers of the two lists. Use a carry variable to store the carries. Initialize the carry with 0. Now, we know that to add two numbers we have to begin with adding their last digits, but since we have linked lists here, we cannot directly do that. So, we will use a recursive approach to do that. So, to add the two lists, we will pass their head node as a parameter to the add function. Now, we know that to add the values in the head nodes, we first need to add the values before them. So we will call another add function inside, with the next nodes of each list as parameters respectively. Again, the situation is the same, so by the recursive definition, another add function will be called for adding the inner nodes first. Now that we have reached the last node, this will act as our base case, 
and we will simply add the values in the nodes and update the carry. Once added, we will create a new node, with its value as one digit of the sum, and return it. Coming back, we will again add the values of the nodes and the carry. Update the carry. Create a new node, with one digit of the sum. Connect this node with the previous node, and return it. We will do this until we reach the head nodes of both lists. The two linked lists have been added. If you liked what we did, let us know with a thumbs up, and for more videos like this, subscribe. Thanks for watching.